Hey, you may have heard of Darwin and you probably also heard of Lamarck. And Lamarck and Darwin, uh, two people who came up with different ideas about how traits can get inherited or passed along. So you've probably heard of this idea where if I want my kids to have strong muscles, I go to the gym and I work out and work out like crazy. Now every kid I have is gonna be born with amazing muscles. You know that's not the case, but that kind of goes along uh, in line with what Lamarck was proposing about how traits could be passed on. So necks got longer because mom and dad giraffes stretched their necks to reach the leaves and then the kids were born with longer necks. Darwin says that's not possible. So what's actually happening during an individual's lifetime um, as if it doesn't affect the genes, then those traits don't get passed down. So that's the famous Darwin and that's Lamarck and that's what they were talking about. But people probably spoke a little too soon because now we're finding out that it seems that the environment, things that I'm exposed to in the environment, even though it's not coded for in my, it's not coded for in my genes, it seems like exposure to certain things in the environment may actually be able to turn on or turn off certain genes, possibly permanently with a few extra kind of biochemical markers that can be passed on to the kids. That's crazy. Everything is changing. This is a new field that's called epigenetics. And if you continue studying genetics in college and you go on and get your PhD, this is a great area to actually take a look at. So the idea of epigenetics is thinking about another layer of modification that can actually go on above what we traditionally understand about genetics that I inherited my traits from my mom and dad and nothing else is going to change that no matter what I do. But now we're finding more information and we're finding that certain genes can be turned on or turned off and modified using little methyl caps that could potentially be passed on to offspring as well too. So I talked about Lamarck proposed that changes to an individual could be passed on to an offspring. Everybody said ha ha ha, uh, laughed at him, kind of well, actually, they didn't laugh at him in the beginning. He was pretty cool in the beginning, but so was I in uh, middle school, and then everything changed in high school, but whatever. Anyways, got a lot of respect until this new idea came around that basically said, no, your genes have to be able to be the ones that are actually controlling the traits, and that's the only thing you can pass on. So I'll jump down to here. Increasing evidence that the environment can trigger heritable changes. This is new, a new layer that's added onto genetics, so it's really neat stuff. We'll talk about that in the next video or the next slide in some more detail. But basically what you can do is you can end up with chemical markers that can be added to DNA that will affect the pattern of gene expression. There's my favorite phrase again, gene expression. Gene expression just means if a gene gets turned on or turned off. So there are things we can add to our DNA that can determine whether that gene gets turned on or turned off. A lot of this stuff happens naturally, but now what we're finding is that things in the environment, exposure to chemicals, prolonged this type of activity, blah, 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 can also cause these little changes to be attached to your DNA that will make your genes get turned on or turned off. And you could actually pass on that information to your kids, into your sperm cells, into egg cells. This patterning of chemical markers is a new field of study. It's called epigenetics, and we're going one step beyond what we call my genome. My genome is all of my DNA, but now what we're interested in is my epigenome. All of my DNA and the specific patterning of whether, one, whether some of my genes are turned on or turned off. So if you read into this a little bit, it can mean that Two identical twins could have the exact same genome because they're identical twins, but based on the environment that they're exposed to, they could have very different epigenomes, which explains maybe some of the differences between twins, identical twins, after they've been born and reared by different families, they can come back together and have very different, not just uh, emotional traits and psychological traits, but they can have very different physical traits. And so it could be the modification of the epigenome that's kind of affecting that. So this is what a methyl cap looks like. So this is the, the chemical thing that's being added onto the DNA that are these chemical markers that could uh, affect gene expression. Usually they're going to be there to uh, repress, oh that's bad spelling right there, repress genes and prevent them from being um, expressed. So here's some examples that we're looking at. Here's a specific type of flower, uh, Arabidopsis thaliana. This Arabidopsis thaliana has been studied and found that variation in these methylation patterns uh, that affect the height and flowering time have actually changed as a result of the environment and have been passed on 
for over eight generations. So that's pretty awesome stuff as well too.